So you, I'm, I'm Dr. Charles Fulk, dental chiropractor here at Fulk Chiropractic. Uh, really glad you've come tonight. We have an exciting therapy to talk about that is really effective and safe for people. And uh, it's a change. It's an actually regenerative type of therapy that's not just a therapy that makes you feel good. I mean, we want to make you feel good, but we, without having to have surgery and, and injections and medication and so on. So um, before I get to that point, um, I, I don't know you folks, are you patients here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you, you know about chiropractic. I, my concern with this is, is that people have a, a pain and they think they run and have this therapy and, and that's all there is to it. But unfortunately, that's not really the case. Um, let's talk a little bit um, just about how this all works together and how wonderful this therapy is. You know, I've been in town here for uh, a little over 40 years. That's hard for me to say. Um, this is our, actually our fourth location. Well, we've been here 20 years. Hey, come on in. Look, the front row seats, Janice. For you and for us. Very good. Um, so uh, there's just been a lot of changes. Folk, uh, chiropractors in general deal with mechanical dysfunction and soft tissue irritation. So what that means is is you know we don't as you know we don't use drugs or do surgery or those things sometimes that's really important uh, but our goal is to try to stimulate the body in such a way that will heal itself because yeah, it has that ability and sometimes it can't sometimes it needs more than that but um, it's important that we assess the mechanical <coughs> function of the joints to make sure they're doing their job because what happens is you have altered joint motion due to most of the time just life I mean Let's face it, you know, you'll come in and I'll say, well, what's happened? Mm -hmm. Nothing, did you lift a piano? Did you fall <laughs> off that roof? Or, it's, honestly, it's kind of funny when somebody does lift a piano and hurt their back, because that's kind of a joke we have. But anyway, uh, we have to try to figure out those mechanical issues that develop, because that's the underlying cause of a lot of soft tissue problems, <clears throat> what's associated with the spine. Extremities are not quite like that. We don't, an extremity doesn't typically need manipulation like the spine does because it's not as intricate. The spine is a compound joint. That means it compensates for itself. And that altered motion that takes place in the spine can create lots of issues. Well, when you have altered motion in any joint, it's going to create soft tissue damage, whether it's the ligaments that hold the bones together or whether it's the tendon that connects the muscle to the bone or it's the muscle itself or this tissue called collagen tissue, which is kind of like saran wrap and it holds it all together. That's highly vascular. So when joints don't function well, whether extremities or spine, it's going to tear the soft tissue. And so if we go doing acoustic wave therapy without managing the mechanical problem, it's just gonna cause more damage and we don't want you wasting your money. So it's important that mechanics are restored, uh, especially the spine. The spine is, like I say, a little different. And so if somebody comes in with back pain and leg pain, they may need acoustic wave therapy, but what we do know is there's something mechanically altered in the back. 97% of the time when your back hurts, it's due to a mechanical problem. So not every time, but almost every time. 3% of the time, it can be a broken bone, that can make your back hurt. Or a disease process, that can make your back hurt too. But most of the time, people don't have that. Chiropractors treat mechanical problems. And I wish I could tell you that we got all of them better, but we don't, but most of them do respond to what we do, and this is always a good place to start because it will never hurt you to try this. Either you're going to get better, or you're going to stay the same. Well, when we have people that don't get better, we have to look at the other options that are out there. Uh, a lot of times, in fact, you in this room will see improvement mechanically, but there's still this irritation that exists, this kind of chronic pain that's there. And that's due to the soft tissue damage that's taken place. Well, a lot of times you'll manage this, and with our patients over the years, it's been very difficult to help them because the options are, well, it used to be surgery. You know, unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember what it was like not to have an MRI. And it was truly just a shot in the dark because you try, they try and help somebody with an injection, and it's just kind of, a, I guess, and by golly, where it goes, and they weren't very effective. Well, as we progressed into MRIs, which evaluate soft tissue, help see the disc, see the nerve root, well, we became a little better at that. And you can actually give it, oh, come on in. Sorry, we're late. That's all right. Anybody else, we'd be upset. Not you, my sheep. Okay, you are. <laughs>
but the injection uh, or the treatments would often involve you know an injection to reduce inflammation which is a steroid which uh, we have used a, a place over on Metcalf for years called pain care and there's two anesthesiologists uh, that have been wonderful uh, in helping our patients over the years but the treatment is a steroid and steroids you probably know this are not very good for us they can relieve our pain they can help us feel better but you don't want to be doing that too often it's very hard on our liver and our kidneys and it's it weakens our bones it's just not a good thing to do all the time the next step would be well do they need surgery and, and the surgeons have gotten so much better you know when i was starting out i mean they just do surgery and everything uh, even and a lot of people just didn't get better but they've gotten a lot better i remember when they first started replacing the hip joint, you know, they struggled with that for a bit. And now it's like a slam dunk. I mean, I can't remember the last person who had trouble with a hip replacement. Then the knees now, they struggle with that for a while. Now that's gotten pretty good too, to do those surgeries. The point is it's evolved over time. And sometimes we do need surgery. It should be the last choice that we use. But our goal as chiropractors is to restore function in a way that allows the body to heal, and you don't have to take other steps. Well, back to chronic soft tissue irritation. Anytime we're injured, we have tissue damage. Anytime we feel pain in our joints or uh, in our musculoskeletal system, muscle, bone, and joint system, we have soft tissue damage. Uh, that just is where it comes from. And when soft tissue becomes damaged, it bleeds, and when that tissue bleeds, it triggers the inflammatory response, which is pain, redness, and if you can see it, swelling. Now, in the spine, you don't notice that as much because it's too deep. But in our other joints, we notice that whether it's your finger or, or your knee or whatever, those joints will swell, and that's the inflammatory response. Typically, the inflammatory response will last one to three days, typically, which means it's usually better in a few days. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just a a real miracle man when I can say on Wednesday as I treat somebody well you're gonna feel a lot better by Friday it's not that I have some crystal ball that's how the body works and I know that if somebody's not better in those three days I gotta change what I'm doing I gotta get either more help or I have to change what I'm doing what's that inflammatory response in fact it's my opinion and in most healthcare professionals if we could somehow control inflammation in this life we'd probably all live to be about 150 never hurt that's a pretty hard thing to do because our lives just cause that whether it's physical or or the things that we eat uh, all those things can trigger the inflammatory process so when that inflammation happens and it uh, causes bleeding well as I said the inflammatory response is one to three days typically we'll see a response in healing and then it calms down we correct the joint problem or we start to anyway because if the joint still isn't functioning well it's still uh, altering in its movement, it causes more soft tissue stress, so it causes some more damage of the tissue. So as chiropractors, our first focus is to reestablish motion that's been lost, or get back as close as we can. And you know, sometimes people come in and, and they've had problems for decades, and you'll ask, well, when did this start? They have no idea, but it's just been part of their life for decades, but they've managed it. Men are typically worse. You know, they just don't take very good care of themselves, right? They just wait until, so when did this, my favorite is that the individual going out of town tomorrow on a two week trip and they come in the day before and they're crippled. And I go, what, what happened? Oh, back pain and when did this start? A couple weeks ago, day before they're leaving, they come in. And see, it's, it's hard because of the process is to really just educate you about what's going on. I mean, the body just takes time. We all want it to go away in just a second, but it doesn't work that way. And so once you have that pain, once you have that injury, once you have that problem, the body has to start the process of healing. And, you know, whether it's a musculoskeletal problem or whether it's a gastrointestinal problem or whatever it is, the body has to heal and, and there's no magic potion or pill for that. We have to be patient, find out what's wrong, help the body do what it needs to do, and let it heal. That's just the way it is. Anyway, when the altered joint function is restored, so it quits causing 
soft tissue damage, right? If it doesn't work well, it's gonna to continue to cause damage to the tissue. So, you know, we do, uh, for those of you who don't know, we do manipulation. We find those joints that are not functioning well, and we attempt to correct them. You, you don't have bones that go out of place. You have joints that stop functioning as well as they need to or should. If you had a, a if you're back, and my patients still say this, maybe you guys even do, you know, my back's out, I need to be adjusted today. Well, you know, if your back is out, you're either dead or you're paralyzed. <laughs> when you, you put, and I know when we adjust it, there's that little popping sound. It's not the bone going into place, the bone hitting other bone. It's a separation of the joint. The phenomenon is called cavitation. The joint is stuck. We push, you know, we push on a little bit and we suddenly get a little thrust and we do that little bit and we feel that popping. It's just the joint capsule opens and when it opens, it creates a void in the space and that void is filled with a carbon dioxide bubble that in about 20 minutes is reabsorbed. I don't care if you remember what I just said. <laughs> just remember that it's not the bone going into place and you knock it out. You come in, I put it in. You go do your life and it comes out. It doesn't work that way. It, the joint, it's kind of like keeping the skids greased. It's like you have these hinges that are get a little rusty and they get squeaky. We keep them lubricated, they do real well. You leave them out in the rainstorm in the backyard for a few years, guess what? They squeak a lot. That's why I'm always on to you about coming in, you know, every now and then, well, I was feeling great. Well, that's good. But it's not if it comes back, it's when it comes back because it's just part of living life and a lot of times people will change jobs or they'll retire and yeah and it, it, it's amazingly different because they have time to take care of themselves they don't have some schedule when the kids move out people get better because they have time for themselves but our goal is to reestablish that motion and once we can reestablish motion and restore the normal function because there's a lot going on with that um you know the Really, chiropractors are not sore back and bone doctors, although we're coined that, and we kind of are, I guess. We really are doctors of the nervous system. Our goal is to restore motion to the joint so it doesn't irritate the nerves as they pass through or by those joints. And you complicate that with arthritic changes, um, um, stenosis, narrowing, chronic um, in instabilities that exist, sometimes imbalances that exist. It's a complicated thing. But once we can reestablish that motion and get it stabilized, then people are able to enjoy life again. However, due to the level of soft tissue damage that takes place, there may be some chronic discomfort that exists. And that's really why we are doing acoustic wave. In the healing process, there's an injury, whether it be my favorite injury is an individual who got out of bed in the morning, crippled injured last night in their sleep, right? I always say, now, did you sleep in the same bed with the same partner? Yeah, okay, well, that probably wasn't it then. What happens is, this became inflamed, whatever, that night. If I would have checked them probably the day before, they've been restricted in those joints, but today, they're inflamed. So our goal is to manage that inflammation before it gets to that point. And so, once we establish the uh, altered uh, mechanical problem that exists, then we start to deal with the soft tissue fallout that takes place. And every time our tissue is um, injured, it tears. And I said earlier, it bleeds. And when it bleeds, it triggers a response. And so we work hard to, to kind of patch it up. My favorite is the guy that, and this is kind of amazing how this works. We have a guy come in on Monday, can't walk. He's crippled. He really can't, he's just totally disabled. And by Friday, He's wanting to go play golf. I mean, the human body is an amazing thing, but because the symptom goes away so quickly, people think that they're okay. And it just doesn't work that way. It's that you have the acute phase, it reduces, the, the body is healing, and it's like you've had this massive cut that now is all scabbed over. We've all been cut, we know what that's like. As long as we don't hit it or knock the scab off, we do pretty good. We knock the scab off, what's it do? It bleeds. And it's the same way with soft tissue damage. And so our goal is to try to maintain and control that. But it, let's face it, it's kind of just part of our life. It just is. And so our goal as we work with these problems is to reestablish the motion and then manage the soft tissue. Now, acoustic wave therapy. 
is something that is relatively new. Um, it actually was started to be studied at the end of the Second World War, just because of this response that happens when there's energy impulse, like if a, a bomb goes off, there's this energy wave that hits people. So you got to wondering about that. And the only, the first time they used it therapeutically that I know of was in 1980, they started using it for lithotripsy. And lithotripsy is the device that they use to break up a kidney stone without having to open somebody up and go in there and pull that stone out that's clogging up the ureter. And so it would pulverize it and it would dissolve and go out. Well, we're not pulverizing anything when we do acoustic wave, but it's that same type of technology. So it's evolved. In fact, it's been in Europe for about 10 years. And it's been in the States here for a couple. But it has evolved into really a very innovative way of treatment. Whenever we have these uh, soft tissue irritations that we have, and it heals with a scar, a lot of people do very well, and they don't have to have further treatment. But if you mechanically are restored to the way you should be, and you still have this nagging pain, then often that's an indication of some pretty chronic soft tissue damage. And so um, in my before acoustic wave, um, by the way, uh, we've been doing this about three months. So it's pretty new to us. But prior to that, when I'd have people that were doing well mechanically, <clears throat> we'd given them time to heal, they even tried physical therapy, it altered their life and their position, all the things that we tried to do to help, and it still hurts. Well, my only other recourse was to send them over to our pain care facility, to my anesthesiologist, that are really good. I appreciate them very much. And they would help them in not all cases, but a lot of cases. It'd make a big difference. And But it was a steroid injection to their area of problem. You'd have to have an MRI. And of course you have to um, view that MRI to see if you're a good candidate for an injection. And they would bring you in and you would have an injection uh, placed into the area by uh, viewing a video fluoroscopy, which is a live x-ray into a specific spot that they think based on the MRI where the problem would be. And so they put in a little stipend and they put a little dye in, make sure it goes in the right spot that they thought it should go into. And if it is, they put the medicine in and they're out. That's the procedure. And it's been very effective. But you can see there's a lot to that. They make it sound really simple when they do it. But they're so skilled at doing this. It's a very technical thing. And if you need that, that's really okay. Because he, sometimes you just get that desperate. Again, it's a steroid shot that gives temporary relief. You're not really fixing anything. And so we would do that and I'd have patients who would respond and it would help them, and which is good. And I still encourage them to keep adjusted, which they would. And, uh, but in a few months, gradually their pain would come back. And what it is, is the same soft tissue problem that due to the life and activity that they have, the nature of the injury that's there, becomes irritated again, painful again, hurts again, back for another steroid shot. So that's kind of how pain management truly is. And if you are, if they're unable to manage it with that, well, they're gonna ask you to go have a surgical consult and see, well, maybe the surgeon can help. So I'm not being critical here. This is just the process of what takes place, <coughs> just trying to help people. And that's why throwing an acoustic wave into this is so exciting because you don't have to have all that. And perhaps, I certainly can't guarantee that, but perhaps this type of therapy can help you enough so that your body will heal itself. Once you get the mechanics fixed, a therapy like this can be extremely valuable. So, where acoustic wave um, comes in is that gap between where, you know, we've, we've got the mechanics straightened around, we've given it time to heal, they've tried physical therapy, done different things, changed their lives, sleep in a better position, don't sleep on their stomach anymore, uh, they raise their monitors where they should be, you know, not too high, too low. Um, you know, they do those things, and it still persists. Then instead of sending them for an MRI and an injection, acoustic wave is a good thing to try. How it works is, um, this is actually the machine here. Um, this machine was made, um, it was actually produced by a German company and actually uh, manufactured in Switzerland. It's marketed here by a place called Curamedics and just a, a distributor on the East Coast. But um, it takes a sound wave and compresses it. 
kind of an interesting, it's not ultrasound. The ultrasound, they're therapeutic and diagnostic. We have an ultrasound machine in the back. We've used it for years and not with a lot of effect. Uh, some people it seemed to help, most people not so much. Um, but it was a healing type of therapy. We'd use it for chronic conditions primarily um, to try to help the condition to respond similar to what we, we, this actually does. That didn't, didn't do it very well. You know, we, you, most of you have had EMS here in the office that's to help reduce the tissue irritation to promote healing of the ear. It doesn't heal you, you do that. But uh, that's how the different therapies work. But this type of machine compresses the sound wave and emits it into the body through this through this transducer head, and um, it's they call it a shock wave. And I always, I always like to define that because that's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a shock; it's an energy impulse. And um, by doing that, it um, softens that scar tissue because as you have those injuries and it heals and it tears and it bleeds and it heals and it tears and it bleeds, you develop this kind of wad of tissue that's, it's not dead tissue, but it's not very healthy tissue. And the reason is the scar has um, uh, fibrotic uh, cells in it. In other words, if, if we took a normal piece of tissue and looked under a microscope, the cells would be all lined up and they'd stretch in every which direction and it's great. Fibrotic tissue, most of us have a scar where you notice it's just not right there. And what happens is the reason it's that way is the cells are lined up in every which direction and the body's goal is heal the wound and it heals with a scar. And so as a result of that, blood vessels and nerves cannot penetrate into that fibrotic tissue because it's too fibrotic, it's, it just can't get in there. But what acoustic wave therapy does is it softens that scar tissue and it allows blood vessels and nerves to be reestablished into that tissue. And it actually is a regenerative type of therapy. It's not, it, it, you have, people see relief in a few visits sometimes, which is great, but the real benefit of this doesn't happen for another six to 12 weeks after you're done. Healing continues to take place. Now I have to tell you, I, I said, I did my first acoustic wave therapy on October 24th. I've probably done 150 sessions since then. And so I feel very good about that. I feel very confident. We went to a, a, a conference in Boston where there was an international conference around acoustic wave therapy, learned a lot of stuff. But we've not had any patient that's gone 12 weeks yet because we haven't been doing it long enough. All I can tell you is what other doctors have told us and what science says, that that healing will continue to take place for at least another six to 12 weeks after your therapy's done. And a lot of people, um, I have several stories, a lady with neck pain and uh, had a fusion in her neck. Um, and so she had this chronic pain here that went down to her shoulder. Um, and after doing acoustic wave, uh, she, her pain was totally gone. She had good, good range of motion. Now she still had the arthritis. She still had the fusion in her neck. They didn't change any of that. It's still there, but by helping the soft tissue around it to heal and soften, her body was able to heal that. Uh, I had another one of my patients who got the regular steroid injections just to, so she could keep functioning. Did her therapy on her neck and upper back, and um, she saw, she said she felt 100% better. I, I had a hard time, you know, accepting that, but she said that. She said because I can lay on my right neck, my right side and sleep now, and my hands don't go numb. And she had the protocol for this type of therapy is six visits once a week for six weeks. That's the protocol that's set right now. That may change in time. Um, but right now, that's what the powers that be say is what's best. But we see these types of things. And um, I have one fellow that is struggling. He's 6'5 and weighs about 400 pounds. And so I have a hard time thinking that the protocol for him is the same as it was for the 5'3 lady that weighs 110 pounds. Right. And so he's gonna have another few sessions. Um, just don't know yet, but it's safe. There's absolutely no side effect to this. You don't have uh, increased problems. Um, again, most people get better, a little over 80% they're saying get better, but you know, they don't, I don't think we really know that for sure <coughs> yet. Um, in chiropractic, you know, we focus on the spine so much um, and our tables, if you've been treated here, are passive motion tables. You know, you lay on the table bend, 
And so if we have a lower back issue where we're doing acoustic wave, we'll actually put you into flexion to do that because we're working on the scar and we're stretching it at the same time because the goal is to reestablish that to function better. And so things like that, we were at this conference and I actually asked um, a couple of the guys there that were presenters, you know, I said, I'm a chiropractor, I have these tables and you think that would be beneficial if we did it because it makes sense to me. And they, were, they looked at each other. Well, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't you try that? <laughs> I mean, that's how new the therapy is. They just really don't know. And we've been doing it and we've seen really good results in seeing that. And so the therapy, um, as we work on this soft tissue, is a little uncomfortable um, because we're trying to change that tissue. We're actually creating micro trauma to the tissue, which stimulates the body to say, hey, something wrong there. Let's go in there and fix that. And so by softening the tissue and then stimulating the body, it can reestablish the vessels back in that tissue again and establish the nerve supply. And so um, we try to keep people on a six to seven on a one to 10 scale. You know, for you ladies, 10 is having a baby. Uh, so we want to keep it less than that, uh, around six or seven. And so it's very tolerable. Um, and most people will say, well, that's a lot better than the pain that I experienced with this problem, so I can, I can deal with that. And so we've seen a really good response in, in just the treatment and in the changes in uh, what the therapy does. Um, people say, how long is this going to last? I don't know for sure. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, a while. Hopefully, let's say we had to do it every year just to keep you feeling good, not taking drugs. Well, I, that's probably okay. Maybe it, in some cases, maybe physiologically, it just heals the area. Unless you re-injure it again, you don't ever have to do it again. I don't know for sure. We don't know. <coughs> but we know for sure that it's safe uh, and extremely effective. If you're pregnant, I don't want to do it on a pregnant lady. If you have some type of implant, like wires, probably don't want to do that. And we recently learned, if you had a recent steroid shot, you need to wait, they say 12 weeks, but nobody knows for sure. That's just kind of air on the side of caution. But back, think about it, a, a steroid shot is done to help reduce inflammation. That's pretty effective for that. And so if you do acoustic wave with that, it's kind of fighting against itself, right? Um, I forget anything. This, this is a Dr. Corey Polk and Dr. Aaron Butt. Um, uh, we went to that to the conference together. Uh, they both are doing acoustic wave with me here in the clinic. Um, uh, did I forget anything? I was going to say, this, this seems to be more the ground level work. When we went to that conference, the things that they're doing with this now. Here, come up here so we're going to have to get harder, 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 harder. <laughs> um, So we won't probably get much into that tonight, but it kind of made us feel like, oh, so this is, this is already kind of bread and butter. This is kind of, we're already moving on because this already works so good. Um, so I was kind of reassured, kind of, oh good, that's right up our alley, that's what we want to do. Um, but yeah, just doing these treatments and stuff, there's a lot of stuff we're still learning and doing. Um, uh, like my dad said, just doing like some more eccentric motions and stuff. What that means is kind of, uh, when you stretch that tissue, it, as I see with a lot of my patients that I've done, as I've kind of gone through, usually about halfway through, they're doing really pretty good. So we can kind of do a little bit more action with things. We kind of stretch out a little bit more, work that tissue a little bit more, stretch and as we do that, it creates more healing response and things. Right. So, um, so if you get that concept right in your mind about what's happened to your body, altered motion, sometimes there, sometimes just a blunt trauma can cause it too. Extremities, you know, you hyperextend an elbow or you, 80% um, of the time when people have knee pain, it's on the medial side. And it's just usually the stresses that we do. Those are all things that happen. When every when anytime you have that pain, it's due to soft tissue damage and it's going to heal the scar. It just, that's how our bodies work. It's like I started out by saying the inflammatory response lasts from one to three days. If you do the right things in three days, you're a lot better. That's just the way it is. The soft tissue damage is very similar to that. If you understand that you've damaged it and it's gonna heal with scar tissue. We've had patients that have come in and come to find out, you know, they've had, had this uh, one fellow that was in, actually in a car accident, had a low back pain, was treating him. He was kind of struggling with the treatment. I didn't quite understand. He was a healthy guy. And about his fifth treatment of six, he said to me, he said, you know, I was in a car accident when I was 18 years old. I said, you never told me that. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's in his 50s now. And so he shared with me, he's in a bad car accident and had, uh, was 
in therapy for like six months. And he, I said, where was it? And he shows me. It's exactly where we're treating. He had such an old scar in that tissue that it erupted and was in this accident and damaged the whole tissue area again because the scar tissue was so deep. And so the history, people go, well, I didn't seem to have any trouble with that. Well, I gotta tell you, your bodies <clears throat> will never forget. They are forgiving, especially when we're younger. But you will have that. You know, have you had back pain before? Yeah, but it was a long time ago. Still the same body, still the same situation. So histories are so important for us. But um, we've had a lot of patients who've seen very interesting results. It works well on all joints. Um, we at our conference we were at, we were there with um, podiatrists, <coughs> orthopedic surgeons, OTs, PTs, general practitioners, chiropractors, obviously. And it was really interesting hearing their stories and how difficult it is for our culture to accept this type of therapy because it's regenerative, it's healing. It's not just take this and I'll see you in a week or two and we'll do it again. It's that we're gonna, we're gonna try to regenerate the tissue. And I had, uh, at break, I talked to a podiatrist that was there. He practices there in New York. And he said, I said, if this works so well, why, why doesn't every podiatrist have this? And he said, it's a funny, he gave me a little pause. And he kind of gave me a funny look. And he said, well, a lot of podiatrists like doing surgery. <laughs> and you know, and so there is some surgery that's be needed, but why would you do that without trying something like this? The, uh, plantar fasciitis, which has been a very frustrating condition to deal with and to treat, and of course with people who have it. Um, this type of therapy seems to be a slam dunk in treatment. I sat next to the podiatrist at this convention, and that's one thing she said. She said, treat plantar fasciitis is a slam dunk. I said, what do you mean? He said, everybody gets better from a chronic, terrible thing. Uh, that people have surgery on, and sometimes the surgery is very helpful. I'm, I'm not saying that it's not, but why wouldn't you try something else ahead of time? Um, I'll tell a little story of my wife. My wife hurt her knee 18 years ago um, at a outing on my daughter's sixth grade class. They went to Snow Creek, you know Snow Creek? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, now honey, you've been a while since you skied, so you know, just watch the kids play and you just be there. Well, she said, okay. Well, the next day, I noticed her limping around the house. So I had to ask, and she went skiing, she hurt her knee. And so we started on this journey of trying to get it better. Well, I do this every day, that's what I do. And it would get better, and it would get worse, and she'd go to therapy and be really good. And then some little thing would happen, and it would get bad again, and into therapy, do her own therapy, home she knows how to do it. And then she had to fall down some steps two years ago, a couple steps, and it really hurt it. Tore the tissue, tore the scar, right? It wasn't people go, oh, you need surgery right away, get an MRI, get an MRI. Well, maybe, but folks, you have to do the right thing. See if it will heal first. You know, she didn't have, obviously, any broken bones. They were all lined up appropriately. She didn't have any weakness where her leg was so unstable that she'd rip the cartilage and separate all the ligaments. None of that happened. But she had a soft tissue injury that we, again, we began to manage. She was one of my first patients with this, as, as your wives are. And uh, she was a trooper because I didn't really know what I was doing, you know, and I wasn't real sympathetic because I'm trying to figure out this machine. <laughs> anyway, um, I wasn't trying to be mean, I was just trying to figure it out. But she was very good, and she just told me the other day, she said, you know, my knee is 95% better. Wow. 95%. And she said, we were out at the Nebraska Furniture Market a few weeks ago, and we went up those steps on that one end, you know, it was way up, and we got up the top of the steps, she goes, you see that? And of course, I'm looking around. What? I, what are you talking about? I didn't see anything. She said, I came up these steps without using a handrail. She says, my knee didn't hurt. And I got to tell you, the powers that be would have had an MRI, and had injections, and maybe even surgery by now. And if that, didn't, if that was necessary, we're going to do that. That's important that we do it. But why don't you try the conservative things first and see what your body will do? And that's exactly what acoustic wave therapy is. It's conservative. And it can help your body heal itself. And there's some really pretty bizarre things taking place in research. When we were in Boston, he was talking to us about acoustic wave therapy for dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. To try to reestablish the connection between the synapses in the brain. Isn't that exciting? They had a picture, uh, this uh, orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Loyal, had a 
this friend had, had doing open heart surgery, he's a cardiovascular surgeon, and they were doing acoustic wave surgery on the open heart. I'm thinking, now how does that work? Remember, heart's a muscle. Uh, doing bypass surgery, the, the coronary vessels became clogged, and so it, the part of the heart died because it didn't get oxygen. When it dies, what happens? It scars. And so he was doing acoustic wave to see if he could reestablish the body to stimulate blood vessels back to that heart. Now, I don't know how all that's working out. I'm never going to do that. But I just thought it was fascinating. Yeah. You know, there's so many things out there, but people have to really think out of the box. And you have to have a basic understanding. Now, what's happened here? Assess it. It's like, you know, our culture has been driven to, uh, to the doctor for a hangnail. And, uh, you know, I guess it was a really bad one you should go, but most of the time, 85% of the conditions a, G a GP deals with is a virus. And there's no treatment for a virus. There's, you just go home and rest and take some fluid and it goes into a secondary infection. And I'm certainly not one to say, well, we're gonna give you antibiotics in case it does. Heck no, that's, that stuff's terrible for you. If it should do that, I want some antibiotics. But we have to become more in charge of our own health and it comes from understanding. And therapies like this are gonna be hammered in our culture because insurance doesn't pay for it, right? Which is probably really a good thing to really mess that up. Insurance doesn't pay for it. And it's regenerative. It's regenerative. A few years ago, I read a book by a, a, a Dr. Esselstein, who's a well-known uh, cardiovascular surgeon out of Cleveland Clinic, the heart place where everybody goes. And he had done surgery for many years, and he has kind of decided he didn't want to do that anymore. So he was going to get into more restorative medicine just to help patients and all. And so he did all this research and found all these ways to, to maybe help people uh, through uh, diet, exercise, these programs that he had set up. He was very excited to do it. And he couldn't get those people to talk to him. And he finally got a time to sit with the administrator of the Cleveland Clinic, who he said was very short with him. And he frankly said, he said, Doc, we're not here for curative medicine. We are here to just treat. Because that's where the money is. It's not that your doctor doesn't care. He does. But he doesn't really have any other, any other avenue to actually use. So this Dr. Esselstein said, give me all your patients that everybody's done with. No more surgery. Put them out to pasture. They're going to die. 22 people they gave him. And they put him on his program. And 21 of the 22 lived out a normal life. One did not because he went off the program. There's ways to do this, but it, it's, not, it's not the culture that's going to do that. You're going to say, wait a minute, there's got to be a better way. And the only way you're going to do that is by understanding. And our culture today, arthritis is viewed upon as being a pathology. It is not. It's a normal process of aging of our life. We live long enough, we all get it. Of course, you want it to be your spinal age, your joint age, and your chronological age to be the same. You don't, you don't want it to be aging faster than you are. But if you take care of it through that time, is how you actually develop. When you, when you wait until you're 60 before you do anything, that makes it really hard. But arthritis is a normal process of aging. In our office here, we evaluate people on a daily basis, and there's been numerous times where somebody has come in, let's say, for lower back pain. And if they're very acute, it's very serious. And we do a workup, and we evaluate the lower back, and we want to take some x-rays, and we'll say, well, can we take some x-rays of your neck? We don't see that too, it seems like there's something. Well, that doesn't really bother me. Well, if you don't mind, yeah, go ahead, they say. And so, uh, so many times, put the x-rays up on the lower back, and bone-wise, it looks good. In fact, if I was a medical doctor, I'd say, well, what are you doing here? Because there's nothing apparently wrong. Now, it's a dynamic problem. It's a functional problem that I can't see on this picture. But through my diagnosis and history and understanding of what's going on, I know exactly what's wrong. And so I treat them. They all, almost always get better. But look at their neck that they claim really doesn't bother them. And it's filled with arthritis. Train wreck. And they go, well, it really doesn't bother me too much. Well, there's a really good point in this. Just because you have arthritis doesn't mean you're going to writhe in pain the rest of your life. It's a normal process of aging. We learn to control the inflammations associated with it. You won't hurt. You don't have to have it replaced. You may, if it functions fairly well and it doesn't hurt, who cares? Who cares? But if it should happen to get to the point where it needs it, surgery is a great thing. 
it can really help. But what happens when they cut out your knee and put in a new one? You got a nice new joint again, but what happens around it? It cuts the tissue. What does the tissue do when it's damaged? It scars, right? Poor quality tissue. So acoustic wave therapy, very effective at working on that. It's a great thing that so you can have an appliance like a, a, a prosthetic knee or hip and you can still do acoustic wave because it treats the soft tissue around it. So it's an exciting therapy. I hope it excited you a little bit about it. And um, to change your thinking on how you manage your own health care and how you attempt to keep yourself healthy because you know what? Nobody else will do it but you, <coughs> right? So you have to know your body. I always tell people, I'm just a consultant. I don't, I don't know your body as well as you do. But tell me what's going on. We talk about, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? Right? It's kind of a negotiation is what it is. But it's a good therapy. It can be very helpful to people, for sure. Comments, doctors? I could be here all night telling stories. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some really good stories. We're so excited about that. But uh, any questions? Anybody have a comment or question? What does it feel like, Dr. Paul? Oh, that's a great idea. idea. That's good. Uh, our closest plug is over here. You say for ladies, a level six or seven, so that means for us men, we're probably two or three, right? <laughs> You'd be surprised. You should figure it out That's real quick. Fine. No, it's kind of fun. That's we sure. change the strength of the depth and the quality yeah. of how deep it goes just to cater yeah. to everyone individually. So, like you said, some people might. Oh, go ahead. So, if you're really, really inflamed, your pain tolerance might be a little uh, less. If something's been chronic and been there forever, we may have to like really get in there and your pain tolerance may be a little higher. Right. So we gauge it, but we're not beating you up by any means. We're just yeah. getting in there and marking those pain spots. And obviously with those transducer heads, guys, I mean, obviously you're doing something in the lower back or their hamstring or glute or cold, uh, pretty thick tissue, right? It's not like we're doing your elbow with the same thing. Yeah. Right? It depends on so the that, that's where we have to, the first session is really important. We go through and really figure out what works best for you and what gets us to that level that we want to get to. And so Hold your right nice. here, Dr. Paul. How long does the session usually last? We, we usually block in about 30 minutes for it. Now, is the session going for that full length? No. No, the, the, the treatment's really about 10 minutes. Like yeah, treatment. but again, it's, it's, it's that communication and kind of figuring and we can stop it and kind of remodify. So like I said, the first session's maybe a little longer after that, a lot of times a little bit faster than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, Physical but, treatment, probably 10 to 15. Okay. Yeah. But getting you ready, some people have to change if it's a right. hip or a knee. Is that what you were looking for? She has to roll over. I had a question. Oh, oh, oh I didn't see it. it. Well, now this type of therapy will, if you put it right on bone, um, it can be uncomfortable because there's really shallow tissue there. That makes me think of it. Just read the thing today about osteoporosis. This is called a radio, um, a radio pressure wave. And it's like the, the ray that comes off is like shooting a shotgun, right? So it's good for broad areas. It'll treat all things, but it's really good at broad areas. You kind of have to then hone in on it. There's another type of, of uh, acoustic wave is called focused wave, and it's like shooting a rifle. And there's studies right now being done on osteoporosis that, um, you know, typically they'll do a bone scan and they'll find an area like, well, your right greater trochanter and your third lumbar and different things, you know, we'll find spots that are weakened. It's pretty amazing test that you can actually find that. But it's, it's showing in studies if you stimulate that, you can cause the bone to begin to regrow. Hmm. Osteoclastic activity, it's really an amazing thing. Now, I, it's not that far along yet that I know of, but again, a safe therapy that they're looking at actually doing to regenerate that tissue. But that, to me, that was just really exciting. Um, well, here, come here, Forrest, feel this. <laughs> Crack it up. <laughs> Crack it up. <laughs> we'll just need to come out with the So it's, it's kind of loudish. It sounds just kind of, wow. it's like a yeah. ta 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 But it, you know, again, what that's doing is that, that Oh, it's it's kind of that, hitting that transducer okay. at the end, that's what's creating that shock. Okay. So you'll hear it, right? And on it's the pressure wave, you know. Don't go too loud. Oh, 
moldings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not unbearable to get your kitchen. We might spend off the tent. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to wipe his hand. Oh, good, yeah. Thank you. So it, you hear that. There's actually, a, they call it a bullet that's in this shaft that creates that pressure. And it's, it's an interesting feeling. It's an impulse. You know, you can't see it, but it's, you know, it's just that pressure wave that happens. And in normal tissue, you don't really feel anything. You feel the pressure. When you hit over a scar, oh, they'll tell you right away. Because in the procedure that we do, there's actually three phases. You use this first, it's a high frequency massage that you go over the area and it kind of desensitizes and it usually feels really pretty good. But then you enter the second phase is the first phase, the acoustic wave. And our goal is to try to find where is this problem exactly? And most of the time it's what we think it is. Sometimes it's not and we're thinking, well, where is this? At the pain, and we find it in other areas, but typically we treat an area about like this, about the size of a dollar bill. And then once we go over that, we find the specific points We'll go back for the third phase and focus right on that, right on that spot. The pulses are usually around 3,000 pulses. You heard that little beating. You can actually set it on different frequencies or different hertz, like it's set on 15 right now. That's the number of beats that it has on the hertz. And we vary that based on the condition and the patient's tolerance and all that. Uh, my first patient I treated was an Achilles tendon. And, uh, you know, I. I practice on my wife and on other people in the office, and so we're gonna give this a try on her to extend it. This little gal couldn't go up steps normally. She would turn around and go down the steps backwards because it created less stress on her Achilles tendon. And um, she came in and she was a, she's a great trooper. And as you work that, it was interesting how it wasn't where I thought it would be. And her Achilles, so you feel, and he goes, yeah, that's where I hurt all the time. You start this thing up and it's like, well, is that what it's supposed to do? What's really happening here? And so you start looking around and then you hit us and they go, that's it. You know, so you really, it's not like piercing, but you, we start really low. We just keep looking until we find it. So a few times it takes uh, some investigative uh, processes to actually find it. But it's interesting how <clears throat> in that case, we, I had to look around for a while before I found it. And it wasn't in the spot that they thought it would be it was in a different area, but she did so well. I saw her husband today and I said, how's Lisa's Achilles? He said, I think it's great. I said, why? He said, because she doesn't ever say anything about it. <laughs> That's a good sign. That's a good sign. So, um, but the patient lets you know when you- It's very the interactive. Spot. Yeah, that's a good point, of course. Thank you. Uh, what we tell people is to say, Janie knows too, Janie's actually gone through it on her shoulder. And we need your help. I mean, we're saying, okay, on a scale of one to 10, I want you to be more comfortable than a six or seven. So help me find this and we go to work. And he said, well, it hurts if I do this or whatever, or different movements. And so that gives us an idea and then we go looking for it. And then we often will find it. And it, it's a really an interesting feeling to, uh, Janie, you want to describe what it was like? You, you're the one that really actually had it. <coughs> I think you described it. You, you started out this shoulder, this arm, I had no range of motion and it was sore to do anything. I couldn't pick anything up that was heavy, et cetera. And I had overused this arm. And you, we started out trying to figure out where it was and we yep. thought it was here. Yeah, we thought it was here. And it's really here yeah. and up here. Yeah. And yeah. then there was one spot up here that was a little annoyed. Yeah. And we just went through the six week session and I mean, after the third or four week, fourth week, I was in so much less right, pain. Right, right. And my functionality was so much better. Right. And I don't know how many weeks out I am from my last treatment, but. Uh, three or four, probably, aren't you? Yeah, four something maybe. like that. Yeah. Yeah, but as long as I don't haul wood, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Guys, I, I've had several of these treatments done on me because I play football and I work, I do a lot of stuff to beat, beat myself up pretty good. I'm a chiropractor too. but. Um, one of my, my first one we started with was my right foot. I have the right plantar fasciitis. And when we're interviewing people and have them come in, I'm thinking, okay. You know, I, for me, you know, it's to get up out of bed in the morning, you do one of these to the bathroom, right? <laughs> and I'm trying to be quiet, I get up early and I don't want to wake the rest of the household up, right? So that was kind of the standard get up in the morning kind of process. And so when we had somebody came through and we did my first treatment, I was supposed to be kind of remembering it, right? Mental notes tomorrow. I got up, I was walking to the kitchen, I was like, oh, 
Uh, you know, pretty good. I didn't really have too much issue with it. Now, as I continue through my treatments, I've probably gone about, I think I'm at about the three month mark right now. I've had zero pain for two yeah. and a half months. You did it right out of the gate. I mean, right, yeah, I felt pretty good. I did my next few treatments and I've yet to really have it come back. I was kind of like, come back? Well, I can't even find the spot anymore. So um, it's you know. interesting how we, we ourselves are learning from this. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming to this tonight because it's such a new therapy. Very few people know anything about this. And it's just to share with your friends and people that you know that have issues because everybody has these issues to a certain extent and finally a way to take care of it in a healthy way. I have a patient, um, his name is John, a healthy young man, strong farmer. And he, he tore his rotator cuff and had surgery on it in 2010. And, and it went well, they did a fantastic job, but something happened in the surgery. He cannot extend his hand. He cannot do a hitchhike or something. He can do this, and he's as strong as he can be in grip, but he cannot do this. And his shoulder is fine. And he told me, the surgeon told him that something is very rare, and who cares how rare it is, what happened to you? Something called Parsonage Turner Syndrome. And it's due to the inflammation of doing the work in his shoulder, compress the brachial plexus, which is right under your arm, and there's three major nerves that go down, and the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the radial nerve will all make this hand work. And it somehow damaged that. And so I've been talking, I've done two treatments on his, on his brachial plexus, and I don't know if it's going to help. It's been, you know, 13 years ago that he had the surgery. But he's willing to try, and it's funny, he's tired. Uh, his, his first session, he said, I felt a lot of tingling in his hand. And the next one, he said, I feel really jittery down my whole arm. I don't know if that's good signs or not, but to treat, it's a safe thing to try. And it, it's giving him hope. Maybe he won't get all of this back, but maybe it's some. Maybe he'll have better movement. Maybe it can help his body heal and be better. I wish everybody would do it in their 100%. Even if somebody who has chronic pain is 50%. And they can manage it better in their own life. And that's a win. That's a real big win. And so I think it's just the American way, you know. <laughs> that's where we're going to be. And that's a good thing. But sometimes just better makes enough difference for people to manage and have a better life. What do you, go ahead. Can you, I think I know the answer, but can you treat two areas at the same time? Or is it best to work on one area and then wait like three months or something and do the other area? Well, we think physiologically it's okay to do two areas. Okay. It just takes twice as much time. Sure. Now, we would, we're actually doing our first one. It's a by both feet plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to see how she responded <clears throat> with the one. And so we did like three treatments on that. She's doing great, so now she's doing both of them. And she'll have to come back for three on the one when the other one's done. And so it's really okay. I think most people will be absolutely fine with it. Like, we just like to test the water first to make sure, are you okay with this? Is you you're okay to function? And we think there's nothing wrong with it all. We're just learning that. Um, I'll share one thing with you that we learned in Boston. is a new therapy called an EMTT, which is electromagnetic therapy. And it's the weirdest thing. It looked like a small tennis racket with no strings. And the doctor who was presenting it had a clip, had a ring of paper clips in his hand, and when he stuck it through, it all sparked, it arced. And you could see the sparks off of it from that energy field. And then, so during break, you could go up and try this, and they'd go over the different spots. And when you had an area of inflammation, you really felt it, <laughs> really felt it. And so it's a new technology. We're not into that yet. <laughs> But you made me think of this, Ruthie, because <coughs> let's say you come in for your knee and your shoulder. Well, what the, the guys who are really doing this research wise, they'll put the EMTT on your knee, do your shoulder an acoustic wave. Then they'll flip it out, put the EMT on your shoulder and do the knee with acoustic wave. So there's this, these therapies are new, and, but they seem to be very uh, harmless mm -hmm. and safe to do. It can be a tremendous benefits of turning your own body on to heal itself. That's really what chiropractic does. We don't fix anybody. I, I you know, people come in and, and uh, I'll say, how you doing? And they'll go, well, you know, I'm great. I said, okay, lay on the table. I'm gonna check this out. 
And a lot of times we'll lay on the table and you'll find out, oh, well, what, oh, I didn't know that was there. Did you cause that? No. The point is we want to, we really are doctors of wellness. If you come in feeling great, we're going to say that's great, but I still want to check and see how you're functioning. Because sometimes you don't know how you're functioning. And to, to maintain that level of inflammation so it doesn't happen is critical. So then we have to do things like this. But it's a good therapy to use. Once David? you um, do the treatment, do you want the patient to limit their activities Good question. the next day or so? Good question. No. no. That's what's really nice. Well, we don't want to be crazy, but you just keep on doing the normal things that you normally do. And you know how I nag you guys about using cold packs all the time? Mm -hmm. Do not use cold packs when you do this therapy. In fact, don't do anything. I say no heat, no cold, no drugs. If you can. I mean, sometimes you get really sore. There are going to be issues, but we just want it to be. We want the body, we want to stimulate it and not affect it and see if it will spontaneously, or it will be aggressively healing that area. Funny thing in Boston when they were talking about that, you know, we're, I know we all preach cold packs we, in that where I get all the stuff stop saying that. Oh, I had one patient run, but like, oh, no, Aaron, we're not doing that today. Um, but with the cold pack, what that'll do is where it constricts everything. What this is kind of doing, it's kind of heating that tissue up. So we're wanting to inflame that, get the body's response, get everything moving and flushing things out as quickly as we can, right? You cool it down, the guy in, 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 in Boston says, kind of creates more like a sludge. Yeah, kind of slow. Cool. It's going to still work, but it's going to slow things down a little right. bit. It's like, oh, all right, so we'll relax. We'll just let that heat stay going. And, and really, after the treatment, you you may be a little sore. We haven't seen much more than just a little soreness. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the area that we treat it like you have a mild sunburn yeah. on it because it brings blood there. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you usually, like, um, okay, so my, my question is, is that you said you also need to treat our like us normally too, like how, how I come in for regular every three weeks. Oh yeah. I'm like dedicated yeah, to you're being good. there. Um, so do we would continue that process on top of doing that? Yeah, what we- Or different? Yeah, like, what, well, here's how we kind of integrate it together. Mm -hmm. um, is that as we're working on this soft tissue, we're trying to soften it. And so we've kind of established our own protocol that like every other week, we want to adjust it because hopefully we're making progress to change that and the adjustment you know hopefully we'll unlock it even more get it moving even better get that motion back in there because that's what we're trying to do you know we quit moving we die that's just a fact you know number one killer in our country today is heart disease i'd like to know how many of those people who died of heart disease couldn't walk down the street because they had joint pain mm -hmm. couldn't exercise couldn't be active and i bet it's a significant number but heart disease killed them if we keep moving, we stay healthier. And that's for sure. How does it treat repetitive motion? Like carpal tunnel? Yeah, carpal tunnel or yeah. anything that's repetitive motion. You know, uh, we have done a lot of that, but again, science-wise, it's, it's extremely effective. And, and that's a pretty good surgery. People will do well, but what if this worked instead? Wouldn't that be better? You guys seen uh, uh, trigger finger, deep, mm -hmm. deep routines, fracture? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to treat that. I've not had one. Those people got to go in and have their finger opened up, strip the tendon from the, the scar tissue, and it works. But what do you do when you cut the tissue? What happens? It scars again. And so in a few years, guess what? The finger comes down again. They go in, strip the tendon. I'm not, I'm not being critical. It's a treatment that works, but there's other things that perhaps would make a difference, but they don't have to do that. That's a genetic thing. Actually, research that came from the Vikings, that contracture. They checked it through all the centuries of time, and the Vikings brought that over. And it's a genetic thing. It's not something that you do. It's a genetic code that you have if you know somebody who has that type of contracture. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll see. I have a science question. Yeah. So we are putting this much energy to the tissue, and we increase the blood supply and everything, and it heals itself. What happens when this energy gets to the nerve or the veins that has blood in it. What's gonna be the effect of this energy on those structures? Structures. Yeah. Well, we're not to do it on varicosities, varicose veins, not to do that. But on nerve tissue, there's no side effects. In fact, it's regenerative in nature. It creates that, let's say that the nerve has been traumatized, like my patient, John. I'm, I'm thinking that due to the pressure that took place from his surgery that damaged those nerves, that they're not able to function well because they're scarring around the nerves. All we're trying to do is break the scar down. That's all, and see if the body will heal that. So 
to our knowledge, there's nothing. Again, we don't do it on varicosities, but uh, on the regular tissue, there appears to be no effect. And again, as I started the lecture today, they it's, it start doing lipotripsy. You know, that's a, they're breaking up kidney stones. That's pretty powerful. The first, uh, the first uh, thought of this was during the concussion of bombs in World War II, how something blew up there and knocked me against the wall and nothing hit me except the sound of that. So we know that there's an effect and it can be detrimental. That's one of the things about a good company like this has done a lot of research to find out what is the right amount. And to be able to control that, to be consistent with it is a really important part of the machine how it functions. And you guys have control over increasing or decreasing. Right, it's right on the sound head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, again, based and everybody's different. You know, just whatever is that point to you where you say that's enough, and we'll stop there. But on regular tissue, you won't feel it. When you hit a scar or a bone, you won't feel it there, and, and it's just interesting how it correlates. Mm -hmm. I could kind of you were doing all my palms. I could kind of feel it. The nerve. Impulses there. Right. You can, it's an energy impulse. Is why you is. can feel it. I think it's safe on all tissue types. And they even do it. We don't do it. But in the research that we've seen, like open wounds, mm -hmm. broken bones. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly safe on all tissue types. Right. There's hardly any contraindications. They said it's almost safe for everything. Everything. And so it's not going to damage anything. It's already damaged, usually. Mm -hmm. There is a, uh, one of the first uh, stories I read was about an orthopedic surgeon in the Northeast whose son was a hockey player and he broke his foot and the fracture would not heal. And he ended up doing some, this is several years ago and this stuff really wasn't known. And he got an acoustic wave machine and used it on his foot and his foot healed and stimulated that bone. That's really exciting these other things like that. You can actually see that type of progress. The thing like I said about Alzheimer's and maybe you can help the heart function better. And I think of things like, um, any other soft tissue structures. What's the effect on the liver? Does it help you enhance the liver when you had chronic or kidneys or whatever? I, I don't know. How about ladies who have ovarian issues and have cysts on their ovaries and have scarring from that, from endometriosis over the years of the endometrial tissue breaking down outside of the uterus, the damage that takes place, the surgery has to be done. Does it affect any of that? I don't know. I don't know. It makes sense that it would, you know, but I don't know. And hopefully in time we will. I don't know if anybody saw 60 Minutes I think it was two Sundays ago. The surgeon that developed deep brain stimulation surgery for Parkinson's mm -hmm. is now working on uh, using ultrasound to get rid of amyloid plaques in the brain for mm -hmm. Alzheimer's patients. And I don't know if that's the same thing as this. Yeah, uh, thanks for saying that. I had a video I watched and um, as we grow older, uh, we develop atherosclerosis. That's a really degeneration of our vessels. And what happens is our body will break down calcium and deposit within our vessels, and so our vessels become rigid, atherosclerotic. I mean, it's like bone. And they showed a tube that went down to these arteries, and it had like a transducer spots every so often. And they would turn that on within the vessel, and it shocked away at those atherosclerotic areas and broke it down and it washed away the bloodstream. The other thing that they that he has treated, I think, 10 patients so far and both procedures have now been FDA approved. Oh, nice. He's using ultrasound for treating addiction. And he had eight out of 10 patients get completely clean and have no desire whatsoever. They know what portion of the brain to affect for healing. Amazing. Thing. So they're doing some. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And stuff. without surgery and, and drugs. Without surgery and drugs, right? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, just all kinds of interesting things. Anything else? Well, we're getting pretty busy around here doing this. But it's a wonderful therapy. It's a great time with people as we sit there and talk and I get to know more <laughs> about my patients. You know? <laughs> so it's very enjoyable, but it's interactive and it's extremely effective. So, no more questions. Thank you so much for coming and just really wanted to educate you. If you have any more interest, you can talk to Dr. Bud here and she'll help you. But um, just good information for you to have in your life, how to take care of yourself and hopefully the people you care about. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.